Hello, and welcome to your first experience with the Dolby Atmos Composer. This tutorial gives you a quick overview of the workflow with Dolby Atmos Composer, which enables any DAW to become a tool for producing music and other content for Dolby Atmos. You'll need a general understanding of the Dolby Atmos format and its related terminology, things like bed, dynamic objects, and so on. So if you need a better understanding of the fundamentals, check out our Dolby Atmos introduction tutorial. There's a link in the description. Note that the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin comes in two editions. There's the full version with all the bells and whistles and a Dolby Atmos Composer Essential, which only has the essential functions for creating Dolby Atmos content. Now, once you install either version of Dolby Atmos Composer, you'll notice that two plugins have been installed on your system. The first is the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin itself, which handles the setup and encoding of your Atmos content. The second plugin is called Dolby Atmos Beam. The Beam plugin is a panner that sends audio from anywhere in your DAW session to the composer. You'll use both plugins together to create your Atmos content. So without further ado, let's dive in. In our Pro Tools session, you can see that we already have some tracks with audio on them and a master channel where all the other tracks are routed. The session sampling rate is set to 48 kilohertz, which is the standard sample rate of Dolby Atmos, and we have a buffer size of 512 samples, which is recommended when working with Atmos. First, let's instantiate the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin on the master channel. And let's put one Dolby Atmos Beam plugin on each of the other tracks. It's important to mention here that all tracks with Beam on them have to be routed to the channel where the Composer plugin is. This ensures that audio processing happens in the correct order, and when putting the Composer on the master channel, that's usually the case. Keep this in mind in case you do your routing differently than what's shown here. The channels with the Beam plugins always have to be routed to the channel with the Composer plugin. I'll have more detail on that in our in-depth tutorials. After instantiating the Beam plugins, you'll notice that they now appear in the connections list of the Composer plugin. Everything from the Beam plugins is now being sent directly to the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin, and you're basically bypassing the mixing engine of your DAW. This means that we can create 3D spatial audio content in any DAW, regardless of whether that DAW supports spatial audio or not. The standard bed format for Dolby Atmos is 7.1.2, and it is also selected as the default for the connected beam plugins, so let's leave that as is. You can see in the input channels that the first 10 channels are already reserved for the 7.1.2 bed. We know this because they appear here in an orange box. The audio from your DAW channels can either be panned to the bed, which we actually refer to as the composite in our plugins, or treated as dynamic objects which land on separate input channels inside the Composer plugin. If you're confused as to why we use the term composite instead of bed, have a look at our introduction to Dolby Atmos tutorial video. There's a detailed explanation there. Now let's switch one of the Beam plugins to object mode. And as you can see, two more channels are now assigned to the objects from that Beam plugin. Since we want to hear something, let's switch our monitoring to binaural mode, which generates 3D audio for headphones. If you aren't already listening to this tutorial on headphones, now would be a good time to put on your headphones. Now let's position our different tracks in space using the panning function in Beam. And let's automate the position of our objects.
used to be a team, we seemed to dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a wound with all that I could do, but I'm not here to lick your wounds or to solve your issues. If you want, you can to be a team we seem to dream to many others you picked your battles wrong i'm not the one you should be after okay let's say we're now happy with this mix and we want to create a dolby atmos file that we can deliver to wherever we want to publish our work like apple music amazon music title netflix and so on our Dolby Atmos content will be exported as an ADM BWF file, which is the most common format for Atmos, and we will create it using the Dolby Atmos composer. So first we have to tell the composer what part of the DAW session we want to export. Remember, you don't have to export the entire session, and you can export a smaller section if you like. We do this by setting the in point and the out point. That can be done either by clicking on the screen buttons or manually. By default, the export starts right at the beginning of the session, so the in point stays at zero. No need to touch that. However, we'll need to set the out point manually since Pro Tools does not communicate the current position when it's not playing back. Now the only thing left to do is click the export button and select where to save the file. Let's label it Atmos. And so now the Composer plugin is in export mode and waiting to begin. You can export either by starting playback before the in point and just letting it run through to the out point, or you can use your DAW's offline export function. For this example, let's just playback our session. And that's it. Now we've created our first Dolby Atmos file. This can be delivered to customers, imported into other rendering engines, or we can even re-import it back into the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin by clicking the Import button and selecting our Atmos file. Let's do that and play it back. to be a team we seem to dream to many others you picked your battles wrong i'm not the one you should be after why feel superior to someone who has been there for you i've pulled you through a room with all that i could do but i'm not here to lick your wounds or to solve your issues if you want you can choose i can't take you down Voila, success. That's how easy it is to create genuine Dolby Atmos content on any DAW. Please check out our in-depth tutorials to discover all of the features of Dolby Atmos Composer. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news, tips, and updates. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.